I was headed to Illinois to be the radio voice of the Joliet Jackhammers, a minor league baseball team southwest of Chicago. This was my third stop on the dream road to the major leagues. I was 26 years old, and I married my high school sweetheart in February of that year. Becoming a major league baseball broadcaster is a long shot. Basically, there are 30 MLB radio play-by-play -play jobs in the world, and I was determined to get one. My dream began as a Chicago White Sox fan. My parents would take my two brothers and me to the south side to see our favorite team, and opening day was always, always the day I looked forward to the most. I loved the energy of the ballpark, the sound of the organ. Nancy Faust could hit all the right notes. And listening to my dad explain the game. In high school, I fell in love with the microphone as the public address announcer for my high school's varsity football games. In college, I studied broadcasting and media game notes, and then went to work for two minor league baseball teams. Going to work near Chicago meant that I finally would be living with my wife, Amy. For most of the past seven years, we persevered through a long-distance relationship. We moved into a 700-square-foot, one-bedroom high-rise apartment in Chicago, which we could only afford because of her job as a lawyer. I felt like I was moving on up. I was in a top five media market and part of a brand new baseball organization. However, there were many nights that I would look out a window on the team bus, gaze at the wide sky above North Dakota after a night game in Winnipeg, Manitoba, <laughs> and wonder, where the heck am I going and when will I get there? It's not easy broadcasting minor league baseball the bus travel, the media relations, the public relations, social media, sales, pulling the field tarp first thing in the morning after a, a horrendous thunderstorm the night before, and broadcasting nine innings, and maybe extras, all by myself for road games. It was a grind, personally, professionally, and financially. I miss friends' weddings, family events, nights out, and a lot of Amy time. Amy and I had mutually agreed that it, if I hadn't made it to the majors by age 30, the long shot odds of getting to the big leagues would be greater. and It would be time to find a different career. The pressure was on. I was flattered by a group of Joliet season ticket holders who created a petition to have a Brian Dalgan bobblehead doll. <laughs> As a game day promotion. They wanted this because... Every player, coach, or manager with a bobblehead before me ended up leaving the team. And most thought that I was a mainstay. Nearly 1,000 signatures were, resulted in the first 1,000 fans receiving my bobblehead doll at a game. But my coworkers said, don't you see? This is your ticket out of here. <laughs> they were right. When I turned 30, my phone rang. It was the flagship radio station of the Chicago White Sox. They asked me to come in for an interview to be the radio pre- and post-game show host on the Sox broadcast. I got the job. The bobblehead hex worked. I was going to MLB at age 30 after seven years in the minors. I wasn't going to do play-by-play, -play, but this was a huge step. I was overcome with emotion getting that job and with the team that was my favorite growing up. I had a good, happy sports cry. <laughs> I was proud of myself and grateful for my support of family and friends. I was beyond ecstatic when I called Amy and then my parents and brothers. For the first time in my life, I didn't have to explain in great detail to friends and family where I was going to work and who were the players on the team. What a rush. The Sox could have played last that year. I would have been happy. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> However, they won the freaking World Series. <laughs> I hosted the pre- and post-game shows for every game that year. The first World Series winning season in Chicago in 88 years. <laughs> After that dream season, I interviewed with the Texas Rangers for their radio pre- and post-game show position. I was offered the job. 
but had to turn it down because it just wasn't a realistic move. Amy was pregnant with our first child, and we thought it was best to stay close to family. Rarely had I said no to any job in, the, in my broadcasting career. Our family welcomed a second daughter less than two years later after the first was born, and I held numerous broadcasting roles on radio and TV in the few years after the Sox season. But the MLB play-by-play -play itch was still there. Then the Rangers contacted me again, and the itch was scratched. I interviewed to be their radio pre- and post-game show host, but with the opportunity to be a fill-in play-by-play broadcaster. The circumstances were different this time, and the dream door cracked open. I moved to Texas in tw early in 2010. Amy and the girls were scheduled to move down in May. Around the time that I made my MLB play-by-play -play debut, Amy informed me of a snafu in her job transfer situation. They kept her in Chicago with the girls and made my first season in Texas bittersweet. The broadcast booth was my escape from the real world, though. I had pages of notes and a mind full of pertinent information and random conversational tidbits. I love being all the senses for the listener, being the storyteller, the conversation maker, and describing the game's best players and ballparks. I was at ease. On May 21st, I achieved a career high when I joined Baseball Hall of Fame broadcaster Eric Nadell for play-by-play -play and color commentary. I was in the front row of the radio booth. The chair seemed a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> it was an 85-degree night in Arlington, almost 40,000 fans in attendance, and the Rangers beat my childhood nemesis, the Chicago Cubs, 2-1 to one that night in Arlington. But it was extremely difficult coming home after games to no one, while Amy turned into a single mother of two little girls. I was heartbroken to miss a birthday party for my oldest daughter. I missed Amy's birthday, too. That was the only time in the 20-plus years I have known Amy that I bought her a dress for a present, and she loved it. <laughs> I wanted to give her something special and different to help mask the, the heartache of the distance. Sure, I spent parts of, of the off-seasons in Chicago, but there was too much time apart overall. Finally, Amy and the girls moved to Texas. All was right in the world. My family was here, and I was being paid to talk baseball in the major leagues. After my third season, I eagerly anticipated a meeting with radio station management to learn about my off-season role. Then, the unthinkable occurred. I was told my contract would not be renewed because the radio station decided to go in a different direction. I was just sucker punched by reality. I couldn't believe it. I was freaking pissed. There were no signs given during the season, nor were there any special sit-down meetings. Once the shock wore off, and that took a while, I decided not to pursue other options in broadcasting. I lived the dream I needed to live. And now I've had more than a year to think about my career. I live my dream of broadcasting Major League Baseball, albeit fill-in, but I'll never forget the buzz of play-by-play, -play. the stories about players and team personnel. The first-class team travel was beyond awesome. And the bling that comes with going to the World Series. <laughs> The time has stopped, but I'll always be reminded of the time that I went to the World Series with the White Sox, though. I will also never forget the tough road I walked to get there. The risk-taking, my love of storytelling, and the vast knowledge I gained throughout my baseball career have led me to starting up my own branding communications business. And now, I am, a present, I am present as a friend, a husband, and a father of two beautiful girls and a handsome baby boy. I don't miss ending family time at 2 p.m. for night games and coming home after midnight, April through October. My life is now my own. Last season, I took my daughters to Rangers opening day, the pregame pageantry, having my girls sit on my lap and listen to them talk about what we were watching and answering their questions about the simple aspects and the complexities of the game were therapeutic for me. Hey, just because I no longer broadcast baseball, that doesn't mean I can't be a fan. <laughs>